Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Uh, today, uh, the topic is uh, shiitake mushrooms. You can see uh, we've got a pretty good uh, fruiting of mushrooms this morning. Uh, we came down here, or actually Jan found them a minute ago. That is uh, one of the importance of having uh, your, your logs close to your residence, is if you set up some logs, and you set them way in the back 40 or somewhere, you're never going to get much of the fruiting. Because mushrooms don't wait on anybody. Uh, we came by here yesterday, there were just little bitty buttons sticking out possibly, and then they just explode. Um, typically you can get anywhere from, oh, a half a pound to one pound of fruiting per log. I was going to show you this log right here. That's, that one... There's probably close to uh, two pounds of mushrooms on that one log. Um, we uh, typically uh, like to use white oak. Any any type of oak works really well for uh, shiitakes. For, for shiitakes, that's correct. <laughs> Don't put oyster mushroom spawn in oak logs. I did that. They didn't work very good. I should have read the instructions a little closer. But anyway... Uh, we do a lot of civil pasture work where we're going into timber and uh, clearing trees, and opening up the canopy, to let more sunlight in there. And uh, by doing that, uh, you, you end up with a lot of trees that you're going to cut. And so that up in the top, up in here, these, these white oaks, the limbs that Jan's showing you, that's where your logs come from. The, the logs actually... <laughs> he smells something, probably a coyote. Um, the logs on a great big tree, I, you know, this one here is kind of overkill. Ah, I thought initially, you know, a big, a big log would give you a lot of mushrooms. No, that's the exact opposite. All a big log does is give you a lot of weight. I mean, this log probably weighs 150 pounds. So you don't want to be handling those. Uh, your, your best log is right here. That's, this one's like, you know, four inches, five inches. Show the diameter. Yeah, it's, 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 it's four to six inches. Um, and so the way, you, the way you get mushrooms in here, of course, is you've got to buy spawn. And the spawn that we buy is mushroom spawn. It's in the sawdust. You drill a hole in here, and then you inject your spawn, like you can see. Yeah, here, here's a, a hole. There's, there's, that had a mushroom in it in the past. Here you can see one coming out right now. So you drill your hole, and you seal the hole with um, wax. So you, you get hot wax, and you get a little cotton dauber, and you, and you seal all your holes, and that keeps the moisture in that spawn. And what the spawn does, if you want to come over here, honey, it actually colonizes this area right here. We call that the sapwood area of the tree, of the log. It doesn't do anything in here. There's no food for mushrooms in here. It's all out here. So the more bark and um, sapwood area you have, the better mushroom log it is. When you, when you treat them like this and get the spawn put in there, what the dog, you're shaking. <laughs> when you put the spawn in there like that, it takes a little while for it to colonize the log. And we're talking about six months. So once you put it in there, you're not going to have your mushrooms for about six months. It takes that, it takes a while to do that. But once they start spawning, uh, you can get mushrooms up to seven years off of one log. You notice we're in the shade here. There's not a lot of sun down in here. Uh, mushrooms do real well in, um, in shady areas. And uh, if you've got a, a shady area, the sun can't get a direct bead, bead on your log. If your logs dry out more than 25% moisture, in other words, they don't, they go below that. Uh, it'll actually kill the spawn in the log, and then it's done. It's not gonna, it's not gonna produce any mushrooms for you. Um, Jan and I come out here. She just found them a while ago. We've got buckets. Uh, we like to take a pocket knife, so you know to, to cut one. Uh, you just grab your pocket knife and you reach out here on the back. Cut and another one. I didn't really. Yeah, I didn't get that one as close. 
There's a, so you just cut them off like that. You see how, how clean and, and pristine that mushroom is? Now, the longer you leave the mushroom out, the more the more dirt they can pick up and the slugs. And thrips. And thrips will come in and, and start chewing on them. Birds might even peck a hole in them. And, the, and they last uh, better when you cut them fresh. They, they just have a lot better shelf life. Uh, they're tremendously good. I um, mean, we take a knife and just slice them like that and then stir fry them. Uh, you can put a little bit of butter in a pan, maybe some sliced onion or garlic. Really good. Jan uses them in casseroles. Uh, you can take this mushroom and fry it, stir fry it, and put it in your mouth and eat it with your eyes closed. And when you chew it, it's almost like chewing on a steak. It has that much beefy texture and flavor to it. Really good. So, if you're interested in doing this, I would suggest uh, going to uh, Field and Forest. Field and Forest is who we get our spawn from. It's up in Wisconsin. You can buy it in a one-pound bag, or you can buy it in a five-pound bag to spawn. And just try a few of them. They have the tools. You drill the hole. You can just use a plain old cordless, you know, a drill. Drill your hole in there. Put your spawn in there. Seal it with the wax that they sell. And they got the little cotton dauber. And, uh, and label them. <laughs> Put a label on them. If you don't label them in, in the year, like this one was uh, colonized. I actually did these on March of 2017. So these logs are now three years old. If you don't put a label on, you don't really know kind of what you have. Um, this one is S S N L V. I've got to go look at the the catalog and see which brand it is. But I'm betting, I'm betting that it's a cool season mushroom because this morning it was 40 Get degrees. It. it was cool out here. You can get warm season mushrooms and you can get cool season. So if you do both, you get mushrooms all year long. But anyway, a five pound bag will do 40 logs. A one pound bag will do about seven, 10 logs. And so just play around with it. If you like it, try a few, put it in your backyard, underneath a shade tree, out by your garden, someplace where the sun can't hit it. And you'll have mushrooms for your whole family. If you want them to produce after seven months, and you want them to produce regularly, they'll produce up to four times a year. But you got to take the log and soak it in water overnight, the whole log, submerge it. And when you do that, and seven days later, the log looks like this. They just, they just explode. Now, when you soak them, that's called force fruiting them. The log's only going to last you probably two to three years, because you burned up all the food in that log by artificially making it put out mushrooms when it really wasn't ready to do that. But anyway, we've got, um, <laughs> uh, I think we were up to uh, 2,500 mushroom logs now. I started with 40, and now we, you can look, Jan, you can spawn over these. I and mean, then we've got another new yard up the hill here by the lake. Um, I have set up a sprinkler on the lake on really dry times. I've got a little pump that you plug into the, electricity and it'll just spray water out of the lake that's the source and i'll leave it on the logs for three or four hours this year we've never watered them we didn't need months. to didn't need to we got rains about every two weeks and uh, we were good to go so with that i'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off and anybody interested in mushroom logs i would highly recommend trying them for your family and if it's something you want to do later it is another income source that you can get from your farm. So Something good the kids can do? Kids can do it. Your wife can help you do it. Uh, Jan and I will be out here cutting these this morning, visiting, visiting with each other, catching up what happened during our grazing school yesterday, and it's a great way to spend a nice, cool fall morning. So hit that subscribe button on the way out, and that like, I'd appreciate it, and we'll see you all down the road.